So here we are again at the Mediterranean Institute for Life Sciences and with us is Professor Herwayt Kalcic, a great geophysicist from Australian National University in Canberra, Australia. Uh, so Herwayt, you are back in Croatia after quite a while now. Uh, how long has it been? Oh, it's a workation. So oh, okay. It, it's <laughs> so been uh, uh, two weeks uh, and then two more weeks. Uh, together with a trip to Switzerland and the UK. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So back in Europe after all this uh, pandemic times. So uh, why is Herve here uh, today? He is presenting his popular science book called Earthquakes, the giants that occasionally get awake, right? And it's a wonderful popular science book about seismology, which is a part of the science but that we don't really know much about the, in, in, in the other areas of science. So Herve, could you tell us a little bit uh, about how and uh, why did you choose to study geophysics uh, when, when you were a kid or, or a bit bigger? Oh, it's a... Uh, I wanted to become an astronaut, so that was a <laughs> plan A, and uh, plan B was to become a scientist. But to me, uh, it was natural to continue my um, education in that, that started with a uh, gymnasium in, uh, in maths and informatics um, in Zagreb uh, the, uh, uh, to study physics. Um, and then I studied physics uh, and somewhere um, in my third year of study I realized that uh, I'm still very interested in, in astronomy and planetary science. But I realized that everything that we know about other planets is predicated on our knowledge about our own planet, uh, in particular studying the interiors of um, other planets and the Earth. And so um, that's how I ended up at UC Berkeley uh, in, in um, California, uh, practically two weeks after I graduated at the University of Zagreb. I, um, I was in California, I was in Berkeley, working on the Earth's inner core with one of the most eminent uh, geophysicists in the world. So you make it sound uh, so easy, you, you just graduate in uh, Croatia and uh, two weeks later you're at Berkeley mm -hmm. working with the most eminent scientists. But, but surely, surely there was a reason why you went there and why they picked you. How, how did this happen? I, it was a process. Um, first of all, you had to <laughs> be a good student uh, to be competitive. Uh, so I had to pass a few tests, and uh, including English and uh, other tests. And I, I remember applying to about seven or eight schools uh, in in uh, the United States uh, and Canada in in planetary sciences and in geophysics. And I decided to accept an offer from Berkeley because uh, Berkeley was a well-known uh, university. Uh, we actually, during our um, undergraduate studies, we, we, we studied, um, we used the Berkeley course of physics along with uh, Richard Feynman's course of physics. <laughs> and so it was appealing uh, and I never felt sorry after that. Yeah, that's, so. that's, that's brilliant. But so uh, from Berkeley, uh, you were placed very well because uh, California is a place of phenomenally interesting and, and large earthquakes, right? I mean, scientifically sure. interesting, you don't want to really uh, live through them. Sure. So, uh, but the, the road took you even further to Alaska, to Australia eventually. Now you're at Australian National uh, University and uh, you're doing remarkable stuff in the outback of Australia. Uh, and that's just part of it. You're, you, you also took uh, boat trips to the South Pole, and eventually you came close wasn't to... wasn't really so yes. But, <laughs> but you, you, you eventually got as close as possible to being an astronaut by mm -hmm. uh, measuring uh, quakes on, on Mars and the Moon, right? Mm -hmm. So how sure. in the world did you develop this career? It sounds uh, fascinating. It sounds really exciting. Well, that's one of the topics in the book. I wanted people to understand that um, geophysicists and seismologists they do study earthquakes, trying to understand the physical mechanism behind earthquakes, how the energy generates and how seismic waves propagate. 
But we also use earthquakes as a tool to uh, study. This is our primary tool to study, to, to take a peek into the, the Earth's interior. Uh, in the same way that medical doctors um, um, basically illuminate the human body, we, we practically do the same thing with the seismic waves. And then the, the global seismology is such a fascinating topic, I would say, it is definitely a 21st century science, um, and, and global seismology then takes us to uh, very remote um, parts of the Australian continent uh, because we want to uh, install as many instruments on the Earth's surface as possible uh, because the volumetric coverage uh, of the Earth is extremely important, as, as you can imagine. Uh, so the earthquakes are our sources and the seismographs are uh, instruments that we use to measure the ground motion, so they are our receivers. So a good coverage of sources and receivers is crucial. Uh, the, the image of the Earth's interior is still blurry, but it's getting sharper, and I'm proud to say that uh, we are placing instruments on the other planetary surfaces using the same techniques that we develop at home. So, in a way, the Earth is our lab, it's our natural lab, and then we take the knowledge, we take the methods that we develop here to other planets, and that's how um, our science, our global seismology, becomes planetary seismology. Oh, that's, that's fascinating. I remember visiting you in Australia, and uh, your PhD students were uh, explaining to me what they were doing, and I realized, actually, you know, you are doing what CT or NMR in medicine is trying to do, seeing inside the human body. Mm -hmm. You're using natural phenomena, the earthquakes occurring mm -hmm. all across the surface, to use their waves to understand their Correct. Uh, the inside of Earth. I mean, that's extremely simplified <laughs> version of what you're sure. really doing. But uh, what, what I found truly fascinating is uh, how you are at the same time a person who goes to field trips and very dangerous field trips, really, uh, in, in the outback of Australia and, and uh, you know, to the Southern Indian Ocean, Ocean. <laughs> my goodness. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you have supercomputer in your lab and people who are uh, doing big data analysis. So not many scientists I know uh, combine such uh, almost like Indiana Jones type sure. field trips <laughs> with the very geeky, uh, uh, you know, computer uh, big big data science. It's it's uh, truly remarkable, and it's not. Uh, you know, I, I'm never uh, surprised when I hear that you won yet another big uh, award. You won quite a few in the uh, last uh, few years. Could you let us know what exactly has been awarded and from by, by whom? Well, uh, I uh, well I think that I'm most known for my work on the Earth's deep interior. Uh, and in particular using, as you said, uh, some of the innovative techniques to image the Earth. And in a way, I already mentioned that we are limited by um, a, I would say, non-uniform coverage of these sources and receivers. So we have to be very innovative and industrious in, in, in uh, how we actually study the Earth. And so what's different now in comparison with, say, 10 or 20 years ago, we more and more we use uh, the, the noise, uh, and the noise becomes our signal. And the similarity of two uh, tiny signals becomes more powerful tool than the weak signals themselves. And so that's what was uh, really innovative. Uh, it came from my research group. And so we manage by, by combining this, uh, by actually explaining the theory behind the so-called correlation wave field, and then applying it, we, we uh, demonstrated that the Earth's inner core uh, is in a solid state because we were able to demonstrate the shear waves uh, to, uh, th that propagate through the Earth's inner core. And the shear waves cannot propagate through liquid. So therefore, this was... a uh, um, an evidence that the Earth in a core is indeed in a solid state, as it was hypothesized 80 years ago. Uh, so I would say this is one example um, for, uh, for which my research group is known. So we are pushing this new field of 
uh, correlation forward uh, and we are now applying it to other planets and so on. So um, I guess my the biggest recognition was um, the uh, fellow of the American Geophysical Union that happened in 2020. Um, and just recently, um, I was awarded the prize medal of the Royal Astronomical Society. And in fact, just uh, uh, in a week or so, I'm going to the UK to, to get my uh, award. That's, that's fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah. I mean, Thank creation you. science uh, and scientists, I'm sure, are feeling very proud after having Andrea Mohorovicic uh, making groundbreaking understanding of the core not being, you know, uh, the crust, yeah, the, the crust, crust, the crust and the mantle, sorry, the yes. crust not being yeah, continuous. Yeah. I mean, uh, now we are having yet another big geophysicist uh, who, who at the, the global level is making real massive progress in understanding the insides of the earth. It, it's just such a beautiful story, I think, and it's fantastic. And w w science just never ceases to amaze us, you know, in, in the rest of science, we are trying to separate signal from noise. You are trying to turn noise into your right. signal. So that's that's completely different uh, way of thinking about things. So congratulations, and yeah. it's fantastic having you here. And I hope your uh, book promotion uh, and uh, goes well, and that many many people, not just in Croatia but also all over the world, will read your wonderful book about earthquakes. Well, thank you much. Thank you very much, Igor, and thanks for having me. No problem at all. Thank you.